your neighbor appreciate your neighbor if you have a neighbor who is be behind you tell him or her to occupy the front seats in jesus name praise the name of the lord hallelujah in this juncture i want to welcome the prison worship team uh, to lead us uh, to the next thanking God. Just thank him. There is power in thanking Jesus. There is power when you, you say thank you to Jesus. When Jesus went to raise Lazarus, he said thank you. When Jesus multiplied bread, he said thank you. You ought to say thank you to the Lord. He has kept you. He has, he, he has protected you. He has provided for you. Just say thank you to him. Lift your hands and say thank you to the Lord. Lift him. Lift his name high. Glorify him. He is mighty. No one like you, Jesus. We have come, Lord. You deserve our worship this morning. You deserve our worship this morning, Lord. You deserve our praises. There is no time you don't deserve. There is no time you don't deserve our worship. There is no moment you don't deserve our worship. There is no time you don't deserve our worship. Every time you deserve our worship. Every moment you deserve our worship. Lord, we worship you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your grace has no time. His grace it exceeds time. His grace is daily, 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 daily. His masses are daily. He deserves your worship. In season and out of season, He deserves your worship. In good times, in bad times, He deserves your worship. He deserves your worship. He is worthy your worship. He is worthy your worship this morning. He is worthy my worship. He is worthy my worship. Each and every moment, Lord, you deserve my worship. When we lift our voices unto you, Lord, you do exploits, you bring back to life, you restore, you heal, you lift our, our hearts, our body are quickened. When we lift our voice and worship you, we worship you this morning, Lord. We adore you. You are worthy, Jesus. No one like you receive our worship. This morning, Lord, you do mighty things. You do what our ears have not heard. You do what our eyes have not heard. In the mighty name of Jesus. When we worship you, Lord, you do mighty things. You do exploits. You heal. You restore. You think you change things in our good. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. 
Lord will give you all the praise. In your kingdom, receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, not because of what you do in our life. We worship you for who you are. Not because you are protecting us or we are doing anything in us. Because you are God, that is why we worship you. Knowing who he is. 
No one can take his place. He's seated at the higher place. Everyone's bodies are worshipping him. All praises are going back to him. All the glory to him. We worship you now. I worship you.
man you say I've come to worship you These people you said the Lord I've come to worship you These people you say of the enemies daily he saves us from that accident he saved you yes hallelujah from that deepest pit he saved you you need to worship him you cannot give him money there's nothing you can give him there's nothing he, everything you have belongs to God what can you give him nothing just to worship him the man you say has come to worship you. Can I hear that? The man you say has come, has come to worship you. The girl you said, the girl you said has come to worship you. There are people who are saved from accidents. In fact, this week, there are people who have been saved. There are people, I know there are. There's nothing we can give God. Just a worship. Don't be stingy with your worship. He deserves it. He needs it. He feeds in that. Hallelujah. Can I have a celebration unto Jesus? Hallelujah. Celebrate him more. Lord Celebrate Jesus. him more. Yeah. More. Hey. More. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. The man you serve has come to praise you now. Hey. The party you serve Hallelujah. has come to praise you now. Hey. Are we ready to praise our God? Yeah. Hey. The man you serve has come to bow before you. Hey. The man you've lifted up has come to glorify your name. Hey. Somebody just lift your name and glorify the name of the Lord. Hey. The woman you serve has come to praise you now. Hey. The girl you serve has come to praise you now. Are we ready to praise our God? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. Just put up your hands together and praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Wrap your 
Wa 
Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody. Let's appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor and we give you all the praise. We thank you, Jesus, because you are the life of God was slain. And by your blood you purchased to our God men from all tribes and races and people. We thank you that this morning we are redeemed by your blood. We thank you because our souls are ransomed. We thank you because you have written our names in the Lamb Book of Life. We are glad to be here this morning. We love you and we appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray and somebody say amen. Hallelujah. We are glad to be in the house of God. We thank God for this time. An opportunity to worship God. Praise the name of the Lord. Forget about what is happening. Say with me, I'm synchronized with angels. Yeah, I say the work of the praise and worship, not just to sing some songs as we wait for our pastor. No, they lead us into a procession, into holy of holies. And now we are in accord with the angels. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody say, I'm in one accord with the angels. I'm synchronized with heaven. In Jesus' name. Why don't you appreciate them? I'll ask them to stay standing. You can have your seat as I bring you one, uh, two announcements here. Uh, we thank God. This is our first service. And I want to welcome even for those that are watching us online. Why don't you appreciate them with a clap? Uh, those who are joining us online, God, you, God bless you so, so much. Uh, I want to bring you this announcement that today, after the second, during the second service, we shall pray for our candidates, our kids, our children uh, who will be sitting for their exam this year. Uh, so let us note that that is in the second service. Uh, our as the school come uh, to close, we'll be having our BBS vocational Bible study uh, here at Believers Hope of Faith Church. Uh, the vocation Bible study is starting on 7th to 9th of November. Kindly note that. Uh, parents, uh, you are being reminded that the, our children will have a trip on 10th of November. We will communicate to you the place where the children will be going. Uh, that is on 10th of November. Charges will be 300 shillings. Kindly note that. Uh, another announcement here also concerning the children. Children will need to have t-shirts and those t-shirts are going for 300 shillings. Kindly make note of that. I'm sure the kids will remind you uh, to pay for them as they are reminded by their teachers. Uh, the Sunday school ministry is urging people to join uh, as teachers. They are in need of more teachers, so kindly uh, let us note that. We have some people who graduated the other day plus if you feel that you are blessed in that ministry kindly, there is short of teachers. So kindly see our teachers for that. Uh, another announcement here. Uh, the discipleship class registration is going on. Uh, and the class resumes on 5th of November. 5th of November. This discipleship class is usually free. So you are requested to see teacher Jackie uh, for that matters. Ushering department is making an announcement that they are in need of ushers. And so the ushers recruitment is going on kindly. See Joseph Modama. Joseph Modama, you can wave your hand uh, uh, for you to join the ushering uh, department. The recruitment is going on. Today, after second service, uh, Reverend Kathy will be meeting excellent moms. Those are single moms after the second service. Praise the name of the Lord. Those are the announcements that we have today. Are you ready to hear God's word? Uh, sorry. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday, we are having a guest. Come, somebody appreciate Jesus. And we urge you to be attending. Uh, that include myself uh, the midweek service uh, we'll be having Pastor St Steve Turunga all the way from Machakos to come and share God's word here this Wednesday evening praise the name of the Lord so purpose to attend and God will bless you praise the name of the Lord the Bible says in 
the book of Hebrews that in sundry times and in various ways, God used to speak to his people through his prophet. And the Bible says in these latter days, God speaks to us through his son, whom he has also made the heir of all things. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you ready to hear from the son? Hallelujah. When the man of God will be speaking to us this evening, this morning, he is speaking to us through his son. It is his son, Jesus, speaking to us. He no longer speaks to us like the way he used to, to speak to people through his prophet. Now it's through his son whom he has made heir of all things. Praise the name of the Lord. It means if Jesus is the heir of all things, then whatever that you are believing God today, you can have it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready to hear the word of God? Are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready to be imparted? Praise the name of the Lord. With standing ovation and with a sound of applause. Why don't you help, help me to welcome our Bishop, Bishop Tom, in the house in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, turn to somebody, welcome them. Uh, to the service this morning. Uh, please, team, work on the sound. You can hear, it's not, it's not okay. Uh, shake somebody's hand. Some of you are not doing it, so I can see you. You are just standing there, and you are not, you are not shaking. You're not shaking anybody's hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, let's make a... Uh, uh, please continue working on that sound. I'm not a sound man, but I can tell when sound is not okay. You can hear the voices all over the place. Lift up your hand and let's make a confession this morning. The blessing of the Lord maketh me rich and adds no sorrow upon my life. I am blessed. I am highly favored. God is with me. His goodness and his mercy, they are following me. I cannot fail. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above and I am not below. I am a blessing. I am not a burden. Wherever I go, I carry God's favor in the name of Jesus and it is well with my life because I believe in God and all things are working together for my good whatever was meant for evil is turning around and to my advantage in Jesus name somebody say hallelujah Praise the Lord. Now before we sit down, I want us to take a moment and worship the Lord. So lift up your hands just for a moment to worship the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful. So shaka ma yante ke da bo so shaka bo sa. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. We recognize your powers working in our lives. Ah.
this Wednesday in our midweek service our Pastor Steve Turunga is a blessing uh, to the body of Christ and he pastors Deliverance Church Machakos, the city of prayer and there are, there are times maybe you've had an announcement pastor is not in town is preaching in Machakos. Every time I go to Machakos, it is Pastor Steve that is normally hosting us. And it's a blessing to have him come uh, and be with us in our midweek service. This last Wednesday, we were here with Pastor Edward Wafula. And uh, if you are not here, 
then you can go to our page and follow that service. Uh, he preached and taught a very important message on Wednesday. These services on Wednesday, they are for us. And uh, our spiritual growth and development should always be a priority uh, to grow. There is echo. Am I Sonny Mir is hearing those things? There is just echo in that sound. Our spiritual uh, growth is supposed to be a priority uh, to us. So services like this where we have men of God coming are supposed to enrich our lives and be a blessing. And so look at somebody and tell them Wednesday come for this service and uh, your life will be enriched and empowered. Amen. Pastor Kathy is not with us in this service. Uh, she is in Kilimani Church, but in the next service, uh, she's going to be here. We are, we are operating like that until uh, Kilimani gets its own direction. So there are times when I will be there, she'll be here, uh, especially for the first service until God establishes Kilimani. And I believe that he's doing that. I believe that he's doing that. So are we ready for the word? Are we ready for the word? Uh, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 1. And I want to welcome those that are following online. And also, if there is anybody in this service that is here for the first time, uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. I don't know why I said 11. Chapter 1, verse 1. Yeah. Uh, if you are in this service for the first time, you're a visitor, let me see your hand. We'll acknowledge you after this. Is there anybody, Harper, in this service? You're a visitor. Wave your hand like this. Okay, all of us are not visitors. Look at somebody, tell them, then stop looking like a visitor. Tell them, you're, con you're confusing me. <laughs> Hallelujah. One else was a few. Okay, so, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh, I want us to read that scripture together. And all of us are in this service, so we, we participate in the service. We, we talk to each other. Because there is no visitor, isn't it? Yeah. So one, two, go. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets. So you see out of that scripture, and we are doing a series for the last over one month, I am teaching on hearing the voice of, of God. Now both in our in-service and online, this is what we are learning on how you hear the voice of God. And hearing God's voice is very important. I cannot even overemphasize how important it is for us to grow to the place where you can discern the voice of God for yourself. So many people have been misled, abused, taken advantage of, and some people are in the wrong situations, even wrong marriages, wrong places, just because they could not tell the voice of God. And so it is so important because God leads us by his voice. God leads you by his voice. And so if you can't distinguish his voice, 
then you will follow a voice. Somebody say a voice. Thinking that that is the voice of God. And that's, that's just tragic. So, I am praying for you. We have prayed for you. That when you come to church, uh, the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, will help us to understand the things that are being taught. And we'll be able to learn to discern the voice of God to the degree that you'll be able to tell this is God speaking to me, this is not God. So when you get to a place where you can tell he ni sauti ya buwana na he is your sauti yake then you know you can't just follow any voice because now you know the voice of God the voice of the good shepherd. You know that voice, isn't that so? So now, we'll come back to this just now. But let's look at John chapter 10 and verse 4. We are coming back here. But John chapter 10 and verse 4. Uh, John 10 and verse 4. John 10, 10, 1, 0 and verse 4. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him why for they know his voice so your the way you follow him is determined by your knowledge of his voice now if you are still having a problem discerning the voice of god then you're going to have a problem in followership not fellowship followership there is fellowship there is swallowship there is followership. It is those that know his voice that can follow him well. So you are led by the voice of God. And you are where you are today because of either knowing his voice or not knowing his voice. You are where you are today. Either because of knowing his voice or an inability to know the voice of God. Now, verse 27 of John chapter 10 and verse 27. And the spirit of glory and of Christ is now resting upon you in Jesus' name. And the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. And now you have revelation. You know the mind of God. You know the things of the spirit. You are taught of the Lord. You're getting clarity right now in Jesus' name. And nothing interferes with your ability to discern the things of the Spirit. And everybody say it. Amen. Now, verse 27. It says, my sheep do what? Hear my voice. Now, the hearing God's voice is not for pastors only. That's what I used to think. That for me to hear the voice of God... I need to be a pastor. I need to be a preacher. I need to be a man of God. I need to be a prophet. And that's what many people think. That for you to hear God's voice, you must be a prophetess. You must be a whatever. The only requirement for you to hear God's voice is you are a sheep of his pasture. How many sheep of his pasture are in this service? Of course, I knew the goat of his pasture will not lift up the voice, but I'm, the hand. But I'm saying, what is the sheep of his pasture? Lift up your hand. <laughs> now, let's make this confession. I hear the voice of God. I'm a sheep of his pasture, and I hear his voice. I have hearing ears. I hear God clearly. I hear God accurately. I hear God all the time. I don't confuse his voice and I don't follow the stranger's voice. I know his voice. I follow him by following his voice. Amen. Glory be to God. And so I'm a sheep pastor. You are hearing God right, children. You are hearing God right now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so there is no confusion in your life. You can hear God clearly. 
And from today, you will never follow a strange voice. Because strange voices have led people to strange places. And because you can tell the voice of God, you will not follow a strange voice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You hear God clearly. Now let's go back to our scripture in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Don't ever stop to make that confession that I hear his voice. I hear God clearly. I'm a sheep of his pasture. I hear God accurately. I don't confuse his voice. I don't follow strangers' voice. I cannot be misled. I, could, I will not be taken advantage of. Glory be to God. You don't have to go to somebody to hear God for you. You have hearing ears. Hallelujah. So the Bible says God who at various times and in various ways. That's what I want you to see. In various ways God spoke in time past to the fathers and by the prophets. So God at times speaks to us in various, various ways. God speaks to us in various ways. Various ways. Kwa Kiswahili, Mungu hunena nasi kwa njia tafauti. Various ways. Now, that's what I want to teach on. Why is that important? I used to think that an, unless I hear an audible voice, I'm not hearing God. Unless I am hearing an audible voice, I am not hearing God. Now, how many people in this service have been thinking like that? Yani kusikia mungu lazima usikia sauti. And there are people who say, you know, uh, yesterday I had God, I had, I had the voice of God, lisikia sauti. And so, because of those kind of testimonies, the rest of us who don't hear Saudi, we start to think we are not hearing God. Isn't that so? But God does not just speak through audible voice. He speaks in various ways. Various ways. So, at the end of this teaching, you will identify the way God speaks to you. So, Asawa, are you paying attention? I'm going to show you five ways the voice of God comes to us. And in one of those ways, or two of those ways, you will find yourself in one of the ways. Then you will begin to know, oh, so, although I have never heard the audible voice, I've been hearing God. Because, remember, you are the sheep of his pasture and you're hearing God. But the voice of God does not come to us in the same way way so the first and, and and what many people know about the voice of god is in genesis chapter 3 and verse 10 that's just one of the many examples but let's use genesis chapter 3 and verse 10 once again we read together it says what and so he said i said we read together and so he so he i heard your Yes, Abraham, not Abraham, Adam was afraid of God. He said, I heard your voice. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So, let me ask here, please, and don't lie because you're in church, you're in the presence of God. Eh? How many people have ever heard the audible voice of God? Lift up your hand. Now you are afraid. <laughs> eh? All right, let's do it different. How many people God has spoken to you? Let me see your hand. Mungu acha nena na wewe. Ambia jirani yako tulisema wewe sio mgeni. Acha eh? Lift up your hand and says, "Stop acting like a visitor. We already finished that." Ambia wewe sio mgeni. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Wangapi, you have heard the voice of God speak to you? Okay, put, put your hand down. How many have had an audible voice? There is one there. Somebody else has had an audible voice? Samuel, Samuel. Now you're... 
at an audible voice. Let's see. Ninya muskiangi mungu. No one here has an audible voice. <laughs> now, somebody say number one. Come on, talk to me. Somebody say number one. Audible voice. So one of the ways God can speak to you is through an audible voice. You can hear a voice, an audible voice. Adam had an audible voice. Isn't this a nice teaching? Okay. Samuel had an audible voice. God calling him in an audible way. Samuel, then he stood up and went to Eli. He said, you call me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. He went down. He lay. Then he had Samuel. He stood up. He went back. Huh? He laid. He said, you called me. He said, no, no, I didn't call you. You go lay down. Then he went and lay down. Tell your neighbor you need to have a pastor and a designer, a karaka. You know, <laughs> Eli was old. The Bible says his eyes were dim. Eh? Instead of understanding quickly. And so the third time, Samuel went and said, you called me. Then the Bible says, then Eli began to discern that God was calling the young man. Then he began to teach him about hearing the voice of God. I made a statement here some time back. You, to tell you how powerful this thing is, you're seated here because I heard that voice and I obeyed it. That's why you're here. Do you see how powerful whatever I'm teaching is? The only reason why you're in this church, seated here, you found a wife here, you, 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 you got child here, you got any jobs here, like, because this voice, I heard it, and I could tell, and I followed it. That's why we are here. So don't look for any other evidence. This is evidence. And how many people are glad that I obeyed the voice of God? You see? Now, the way you are glad, other people should also benefit because you've heard God. Your hearing God will help other people. Somebody somewhere will be delivered because you had God. Somebody somewhere will be helped because you had God. Amen. So Eli began to teach Samuel on hearing the voice of God. He said, now when you hear that voice, say like this. Speak. Your servant is listening. So he taught him to discern that voice and to respond to that voice and let me tell you something. That was the starting point of Samuel's ministry. After that, his ministry took off. Because now he could hear God. God began to speak to him about Eli's children. God began to speak to Samuel about the future of Israel. An entire nation was impacted because a man had learned how to hear the voice of God. This is how God would speak to Samuel and say, You go uh, to the house of Jesse and I have taken one of the sons to become the king. Can you imagine the danger that would have happened if Samuel was not hearing God? He would have anointed the wrong person. But every time when Eliab was passing before him, the voice that he had learned to obey would tell him, this is not the one. This, this is why this thing is important. Even marriage, you'll marry the wrong person if you can't hear God well. You will. And after you are married is when you realize, ah, ah. Eh? <laughs> you see, because when you wake up in the morning, you say, ah, come and you know a blouse. When you want to wear it, <laughs> you're like, ah, it's a blouse. It's a blouse. You must hear God, my friend. 
Somebody say one of the voice, one of the ways is an audible voice. Amen. So write that down, okay? Now, that's not the only way that God speaks to us. That's not the only way. So don't say, because you have never had an audible voice, God has never spoken to you. Let's go to the second way that God also speaks to us. God also speaks to people through visions and dreams. Now, last Sunday in the second service, I shared about uh, Joseph and a few things about Joseph. But I want you to see Numbers chapter 12, and verse 6. What to a nimeonyeshwa to mefiki to mefiki wasasa. And nimeonyeshwa to mefiki wasasa. Tell your neighbor, what to a kuonyeshwa to mefiki wasasa. Nimeonyeshwa. Nambia to koapo sasa. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 6. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in church this morning? Okay, let's read together. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I the Lord make myself known to him in a what? In a vision. And I speak to him in a dream. So, the second way God can speak to you is through dreams and vision. Na ni ukweli. Many years ago, I would have dreams, not all the time. Now, I want to tell you something. Hapo mapema. Me, I am not the dreaming type. I don't. There are some people, when they, when they eat lunch, 15 minutes, wamefanya hivi. Nimeonyeshwa. Wakilala usiku, wameona. Me, I am not the dreaming type. I can stay months without a dream. I sleep poop. Na mshuanga hapo nikichafika. Nikilala nimelala hakuna ndoto sioni naona tu giza. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not the dreaming type. But the few times I dream, my dreams are prophetic. I dream things that are actually happening or are going to happen. It doesn't happen all the time. But God speaks God speaks through dreams. Now, listen. You are in this service, and maybe you have been saying, me, I don't hear God. Mimi mungu Like in the, the dreams you have, you have never known that the voice of God is coming to you in a dream. Now, I'm going to show you what you need to do because, and I know, in fact, most of the people that I know have very prophetic dreams. They dream things, they wake up, and dreams can be confusing, isn't that so? They are very confusing. That's why even Pharaoh had a dream and he needed an interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And Nebuchadnezzar, listen, ya Nebuchadnezzar knew the Kwambaya. At least Pharaoh, he knew that. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Can I tell you about Nebu? He had a dream. <laughs> then he woke up. Listen, that guy was crazy. He woke up and then he said, I have had a dream, but I don't know the dream. I, don't, I can't remember what it is, but I just know I had a dream. <laughs> then he called the magicians that were on the payroll, the interpreters. He told them, okay, you have been eating my salary and eating my food. Kazi kwenyo. Nimeota, wakasema, yes, master, we are here. Tutakuambia ndoto hiyo ndiyo kazi yetu. Akawambia, boss, relax. I have had a dream, but I don't know the dream. So he said, to, he told them two things. He said, first, tell me the dream that I have dreamt. And then he said, and, inter and give me the interpretation of the dream I cannot remember. <laughs> they said, no one can do that. They say there is nobody who can do that. They said that's impossible. They said that's impossible. It can't happen. 
But of course, he received an interpretation of the dream. Isn't that so? Yes. So there are some dreams you can have. You wake up in the morning. Eh? Now your dream awelewi, awelewi. Umeota mavitu funny. Umeota we umesimama. Na migu yako ni kama ya, ya donkey. <laughs> Unajangala lakini migu ni ya... Migu ni ya punda. <laughs> I had a dream. Uku nilikuwa tu sawa lakini. Migu. Ilikuwa ya punda. Inamanisha nini? And many times because we can't interpret the dream, we dismiss it. Isn't that so? We dismiss. Atuna puusa, atuna sema. Nilikuwa na kindoto kibaya. Ilikuwa ndoto gani? Hata sielewi yo ndoto, nimeota tuma vitu. Eh? But from today, understand that God can speak to you in a dream. Now, you see that scripture in Daniel 2 7? Daniel interpreted the dream, and the king acknowledged that God is a revealer of secrets. That's, that's the most amazing thing that a man can tell you, I had a dream. You tell him the dream, you are not in the sleep. You tell him the dream, then you tell him the interpretation. That's, lift up your hand and say, that's supernatural. Hey. So, God speaks through dreams. Let me see, how many people here, you normally have dreams, dreams, unautandoto, prophetic, and you know there are some bad dreams, you know, you're being chased by rats, big rats. I'm not talking those <laughs> How many people here you can tell that your dreams are prophetic? Lift up your hand. Do you normally dream? Can I see the dreamers? Amen. Now this is what you need to do. Pay attention. This is what you need to do. From today, start recording your dreams. Write them down. Get a notebook there after this service. And Andika Jayo notebook. Dreams and visions only. Record every dream. Listen. The ones that make sense and the ones that don't. O kiota tu Andika. Atta kama welewi. When Pharaoh had a dream, did he understand? No. When Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, did he understand? Why is it recorded in the Bible? Because every dream will eventually have an interpretation. So record your dream. Just write it. Just record it. You, it doesn't have to make sense. Write it. Record it. Because in the dream, God speaks. Now let me show you two examples about God speaking to a man in the dream and then we shall go to the third. So there are those who hear a voice. There are those who never hear a voice. One on and off. Not on. When we began the church we were just a few people like that time we were maybe 15 or 10, 15 in a small room there. Then one time I had a dream. Exactly where we are. We were having a service. There were so many cars. There were now cars parked outside here. That time there was no car. There were so many cars. I was coming out of the sanctuary. Atasina Nafasia Kupita. So many cars. So I knew that God was telling me that the cars are going to come. So I told the people, the few people who were within church, to make parking. So they took the little stones, they arranged them there, they put the white chalk. But they were looking at me funny. I said, I said, this is prophetic because we'll have cars. But I saw it in the dream. Now I cannot tell you how many members of this church have cars. I can't tell you how many cars. Because there are people who come to this church, they have cars, but they never drive here. 
because we don't just have parking, but we have had so many cars. So many. Within the last one month, I've dedicated three cars. Within one month. Cars of members. Many cars. But I saw it where? I saw it where? Somebody say in a dream. Now, in Genesis chapter 37 and verse 7. Genesis 37 and verse 7. I want to give you an example of Joseph in the Old Testament and Joseph in the New Testament. And we are going to read together. One, two, go. Read. There we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf did what? Arose and stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood around and bowed down to my, to my sheaf. Verse 8. Verse 8, please. Let's go. And his brother said unto him, Shall you indeed rule over us? Do you, are you going to have dominion over us? So they hated even more for his what? They hated him for what? For his dreams. Now look at verse 10. Then he dreamed still. Now verse 9. Uh, now verse, verse 9. Then he dreamt still another dream. This is Joseph in the Old Testament. How many of us here agree that God was speaking to the young boy? How many agree? And how was he speaking to him? Through? There is no record that Joseph in the Old Testament had an audible voice. There is nowhere. There is nowhere Joseph, maybe he did, but there is no place where the Bible says Joseph had an audible voice. Every message of God coming to him was in the form of a what? Of a dream. So take your dreams seriously. Write them down. Are we together? Write them down. Even if it doesn't make sense now, write it down. There was a lady in this church. She goes to another place now. She would have dreams about this particular church. And I tell her, write them down. I have them. There is a place I, I keep those things. I have them. All those things she used to dream have happened in this church. Even with the leadership. She would have dreams of leaders. And she would tell me, I saw this dream and this and this. I said, write it down. It was not making sense. Everything she dreamt came to pass. So write it down. Are we together? Let's go to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. We look at Joseph in the New Testament. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was bethroned, bethroned means engaged to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make a public example, was minded to do what? To put her away secretly. Let's continue. But while he thought about these things, you people stopped reading. Let's read together. While he thought, one more time, while he thought, while he thought about these things, what happened? The angel of the Lord appeared to him how? Appeared to him where? And so you see here, Joseph is about to make a decision and he doesn't know what to do. And God begins to address him through the dream. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream. Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Spirit. And so, unless Joseph had the voice of God, he probably would have broken the engagement. But because God spoke to him in the dream, he did what? He continued and got Mary and married her because he had the voice of God. May you hear God's voice? 
Hallelujah. I said, may you hear God's voice. Those of you that are about to make important decisions, lift up your hand and say, I'm hearing God. Those that don't know whether to move this way or that way, somebody say, I'm hearing God. I speak this prophetically in Jesus' name. If you are a Joseph today, you're in a place where things are not clear. You don't know what to do. You don't know the direction to go. I am praying for you that even tonight when you sleep, some things will come to you clearly in the dream. Because God also speaks to us in the dream. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so Joseph, Joseph hears the voice of God. And the voice comes to him through what? Comes to him through the dream. Number three, write this down. Number three, write this down. God also can speak to us through what is referred to as the voice of circumstance. Kopetia Hali or circumstance God can speak to us. Now let's look at Exodus chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2. So now we are on point number 3. Number 1, the voice of God can come to you audibly. Number 2, the voice of God can come through through a dream or a vision. Doto. Kuna watu wanaota umepata accident mbaya. Unaota umekufa lakini unapata na umeamka. Yani umeota uko kwa accident ukakufa. Lakini unafanya nini? <laughs> Alafu unasema kwa ndoto nilifanya nini? <laughs> Lakini nimefanya nini? <laughs> Let's read Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. 1, 2, go. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Now look at verse 2. The angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord did what? Appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Somebody said there is a voice of circumstances now let me explain for you to you what it means sauti ya circumstance ama sauti ambayo inakuja kupitia hali fulani ambayo unapitia the voice of circumstance now understand this God's people that many times hello many times kama mungu anajaribu kukuongelesha Na hausiki, hausiki, umekua kichwa ngumu, hausiki. Many times, when God has spoken to you audibly, he has spoken to you in the dream, he has spoken to you another one which I'm going to explain to you, the voice of his servants. God can speak to you and God will speak to you directly through the voice of your pastor. That's why you must know who your pastor is. There must be a voice that speaks to your life. Not every voice. Forget those people who say, I have five pastors. Nikona pastor wa wabiashara, na nikona pastor wandoa. You are confused. There must be, somebody say, a voice that speaks into your life. Because many times, God will use the voice of your pastor to speak to you. And that's why at times, when you have a dream, listen, when you have a dream, then in that dream, it is not pastor, it's God's voice. It's just a, the face of the pastor will show up, but it's actually the God that is speaking to you. Can I tell you one of the worst mistakes you can ever do? Are you ready for this? One of the worst mistakes you can ever do is have a pastor you don't listen to. That's the worst thing that can ever happen. 
Munaniangalia vokuzamu amujelewa ni mesema nini? The worst thing you can ever do to yourself is have a pastor you don't listen to. That is instant calamity. Instant. If for whatever reason you can't listen to your pastor, you need to pray and say, God give me a shepherd I can listen to. Because there are times it is a voice of God that will come through your shepherd that will push you to the next level, give you direction, bring deliverance in your life. That's why that voice is very important. And this is the reason why the devil always tries to interfere with your relationship with your, with your man of God. The devil will try to interfere how you receive from your pastor because he knows. I am telling you, he knows. Somebody said the voice of circumstance. Now listen. When God has tried every other way to speak to you and you're not listening, he speaks to you through something called the voice of circumstance. Now many times, not all the times, many times, it's not a good experience. I want to show you something. Do you see where he says, and the angel appeared to him in a what? You are going to talk to me. The angel appeared to Mary, uh, to, you, to, to, to Moses in a what? In the form of a what? In the form of a flame. Somebody say a flame. I have shaken a hapo. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 28. Voice of circumstance. Luke chapter 1 and verse 28. The Bible says, And having come in, Mary is having an encounter with angel Gabriel. Having come in, the angel Gabriel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Verse 29, please. But when she saw him, she was troubled, somebody say, at his saying. Not at his appearance, at his. So the angel, when he appeared to Mary, did he appear in the form of a flame? No. He appeared in his angelic form. All right, let me ask again. Could there be somebody here you have ever seen an angel, live, live, like you saw an angel appear to you? Let me see. Worship him. You don't hear any more voice. You don't dream. You have not seen an angel. Ah. Stretch forth your hands towards these people. Do we have the right people in the worship team? Pastor is asking, have you had audible voice? No one lifted up their hand. <laughs> Do you get dream vision? Still no boot. <laughs> have you seen an angel? No boot. <laughs> Stretch forth your hands towards them. <laughs> Appreciate these people. So the angel appeared in angelic form. Now, one of my aunties, I hear, I hear. One of my aunties, I hear that when she was small, she used to have visitation of angels in the village. It happened like three times. She's going to draw water. She sees an angel. At times she's in the house sweeping, an angel would appear. I don't know. I'm not, I can't confirm. I'm telling you the things I used to hear. But I have not seen, okay, I have not seen an angel in my life like this is an angel. But, but there, are, there are many times when I'm in my house, not in the church, I've seen in my house, I see flashes of light. I see like something passes. And there are times it will be so frequent I got used to it. I'm just seated and, it, and the light passes and I will tell that's an angel isn't that so yes now one time I had an experience and I know that that was an angel I was I overslept 
I, I wake up to pray and then that day I overslept. And then when I woke up, my first thought was, ah, I have overslept. I didn't wake up to pray. But then the entire room was filled with very fine music. Beautiful music had filled the entire place. I am not asleep now. There was music, nice music, crystal clear music. And I listened to that music and in my head I'm thinking, where is that music coming from? And then I opened my eyes and the music stopped. I tried the following day, there was no music. Until today. <laughs> Question, when the angel came to Mary, did he have to come in fire? No. He just came in the usual form. And you know what happened? Mary received the message. There are people right now, they may not know, you may not know, but they are dealing with the voice of circumstance now because God has been talking to you for a very long time. Some even to get saved. Unaski and Daniako, you need to get saved. Unakua kichongum. Mungu anakuambia wachana na injia, enda namna hii. You don't listen. Sasa iyo sauti, ambayo umekata kuti, inapikuja na pastor, you don't listen. God gives you some dreams. You even seen the dream, you still don't listen. He speaks to you audible, you don't listen. Convicts you, you don't listen. Now you know what happens? There is another voice. It is called the voice of circumstance. Now, this is what happened to Moses. Because, listen, for how many years was Moses running away? Forty. Forty years God has been looking, following this man. Forty years. Forty. Not fourteen. Forty years. God is speaking to Moses. Moses is not listening. Moses is running away. Moses is doing whatever he wants. Moses has found himself a job in his father-in-law's house. Moses is taking care of sheep. Instead of taking care of the sheep of Israel, he's taking care of Jethro's sheep. Ah, heaven got tired. He said, this man as a king. Hallelujah. Angel, I can give you a motto. Boom. Outfit your fire. Come on now. Go to the man. Come on, just give yourself to him. He motto. It a fanya siki. I'm just giving you. Ose fikishane hapo na mungu. I'm just giving you. Ose fikishane hapo na mungu. Ose fikishane hapo na mungu. You are a very small thing. Ose why fikishane hapo ni na describe na mungu. Where God now has to send you an angel. Eh? in flame where he has to appear in the flame of fire it is a scary thing now in the midst of that flame Moses began to look he says fire somebody say fire then look at verse 3 verse 3 Moses said I will turn aside now I will for the first time in 40 years, the eyes of Moses came from sheep. He looked at something else. This man has never turned aside from the sheep. Eh? He, now, now he turned aside. You know, there could be somebody in this service. This service. The only reason why you come to church now is because you lost your job, your relationship failed, you are broke. Things are not working. That's why you are in the first service looking like Angel Zechariah. Kipata kakitu, out of Rudy. Do you know there are people, problems are the ones that bring them to church. Akiwa na shida, ataenda kanisani. Akiwa na shida, atatokea kesha. Maombi, ana, after service like this, anakuja, anasumbua leaders. Nataka munipatia program yote ya church. Okay, Monday ni nini? 
Monday, what prayer? Okay, prayer. What time? What time, please? And I'm going, okay. Tuesday, I'm, I'm, I'm very ready. <laughs> and I'm going Tuesday, the home fellowship. Okay. Yes. Tuesday, Okay. Wednesday, ni Sangapi, 6.30. Okay. Kabla Ibada, Neza Kuja, ni Pange Viti. Yani, this man is available. Watch a party kit. The good thing with after you've been a pastor like me for many years, you know people. Some things are normal to us. It is you things we don't know. We don't know. We know people. Ata wewe kiwa ni dereva wa basi. Na umeendesha embassy for 15 years. Auta kuwa na experience? Eh? Auta kuwa na experience? Uta kuwa naona mtu kwa stage. Vile anasimamisha tu. Vile anasimamisha tu yo embassy. Unasema Peter huyo ni kisirani. Yaani you know me, you will know people before they come into the bus. <laughs> you know them. <laughs> kusimamisha tu stanya kusimamisha unasema ah chana na huyo. That one is a problem. <laughs> Makanga ambaye ana experience anakuwa unaacha pesa anakwambia achana na hiyo. Ni pesa na kisirani. <laughs> How do you know? Somebody say experience. Sasa shida yenu most of you mnafikirianga sisi pasta ni wajinga. Munaonanga like we don't know. That's what you think. At a pastor, anakwanga na experience. Yes. Hallelujah. So Moses turned aside. He said, I want to see why this bush is not burning. Now look at verse 4. Huh? Sasa amekuja na moto. Na kwa sababu the angel is appearing in fire. Now Moses can listen. Tell your neighbor, please, usifikishane hapo na mungu. Eh? Usifikishane na mungu maali mpapo. Kila kitu kinachomeka, there is fire. And then some of you run to church very fast. Hey, pastor, what is the problem? There is problem. I say, what's the problem? Tell me. What? Tell me the problem. Everything. <laughs> Say, say that one thing, I mean, everything, my marriage is not working, my business is, is bad, my son has started drugs, my daughter disappeared from everything. The Bible says when the Lord saw, he turned aside. And this is what God has been waiting for, for many years, for this man to turn aside. He called him, he called him, now he had his voice. From the bush, from the fire, he called him. Inside that bush was a voice. I'm telling you, I have seen men that would not listen to God. They lost everything. Then they listened. I've seen men who would never serve God. And everything had to be scattered. And then they listened. I've seen people who were too busy, too busy, too busy, until everything was taken away. Now they are not busy. Now they would listen. There is a man. When I was a youth, he came and gave us a testimony and I'm stopping here. He came and gave us a test. Have you learned something? Uh, have you learned something? Okay, what to a voice of circumstance able to own Wale munangwajia moto ikuje. Some of you ladies, mungu wana kuongelecha na kuambia wachana na ujama unafuata. Pastor na onyesho kwa ndoto. Pastor na kuja na kuambia, I have seen. God is telling me, leave that. I'm telling you. Then you end up with AIDS. You end up infected with HIV. Now, who yo jama ulikuwa naambiwa na mungu kila sa wachana na unapatwa na ugonjwa unatulia. Sasa, una, sasa you want to be an usher. Yeah, now, now you can be in the worship team. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, now you, now, now you want to be in the worship team. Sunga sikia mapema. Nini, nini, ask your neighbor, nini, nini, wewe, au siki. Eh? Au siki, maka moto iwake. Ndiyo sikie sauti. 
Mwana usiti kama Mary. Mary did not, the angel did not have to come in fire to Mary. You know what Mary did? Vile alisikia mungu. You know what Mary said? She said, I am God's servant. Let it be unto me according to his word. I submit. So let me give you the testimony of this man before I stop. Because he alipitia ikitu nasema the voice of circumstance. And a few years ago, maybe eight years ago, there is a lady I know. She was born again. And she was married. And she had two children. Na kuambia uyo dada alikuwa na kiburi. Have you seen pride? Alikuwa na kiburi mbaya. She despised every single girl. You could not greet the husband. She was in one of the churches around. You can't even greet her husband. Then one time, I said something. I said, it just came out of my heart. I said something. I said, I said somebody should talk to that lady and warn her. I said, I said because God is going to do something and he's going to humble her completely. I just came out of my heart. You know what happened? A few years later, husband was in a bad accident on one of these roads and he died. If you see that lady today, eh? Tukutana na ee anakupatia hagi ya upendo wa yesu. But did the husband have to die? Don't tell your neighbor, these things pastor is saying are not a joke. Tell them, usifikishane na mungu maali, lazima akukujie kwa moto. Don't get there. Just, just do what you need to do. So this man, mungu alikuwa memuongelesha eh? to serve him. So the man decided, yeye maneni akua mubiri, he cannot. And the man was from Tanzania. So he joined the Tanzania Air Force. And he joined to be trained as a jet fighter pilot. Ataki maneno ya mungu, he joined. Then they were taken to Israel, Golan Heights. That's where they went to do the training. Eh? Then while they were there, the aircraft... They were being trained in. There were 15 pilots from Tanzania. Nikama vile driving school. Watu anendanga. Uya anendesha mbaka pale. So you know that. Mungine anachukua. So they were being trained. Flying. And then that plane crashed. It crashed on one of the mountains. This man was given as a testimony in our church. Because he came as a guest. And was talking to us as young people. He said, you must learn to obey the voice of God. Hello? So now, Akona Giza, everything went black. The next time he opened his eyes, his leg was up like this, and the entire room was white. He was in a hostel somewhere. Yeah? I think in Israel. He had been in a coma for four months. Four. He is the only one who survived the crash. All the other people died. That's how he decided to obey the voice of God. Another example which I don't have time to explain, but you know. Didn't God talk to Jonah to go where? And then it be, he became smarter than God. He went to Tashish. He got into a ship. He paid fare. Then what happened? Somebody said the voice of circumstance. He was swallowed by a fish. <laughs> Can you imagine three days in the belly of the fish? 
until the man said, now Lord, I have heard you. Nima kusikia zasa. Nima kusikia. And the fish vomited him where he was supposed to go. Receive grace to obey God's voice. I'm telling you, receive grace. I am sharing this with humility of heart. I'm sharing this trembling because I know by the time Mungu anasema, Ebuena muongeleshe, lakini sasa, anambia malaika, vaa moto. Hey. Ati huyo uwa siki, malaika anambua sasa fanya hivi. Usiva ile utukufu nendanga na kimalaika. Anambua sasa, hapo kwa wardrobe, sikuna ile suti ya moto. Eva hiyo. <laughs> Wanakuja kama na waka. Moto. And maybe you are here. And you don't understand whatever is happening. I'm not saying all the time. At times, people that will not listen. One, God speaks audibly. They don't listen. God shows them even in a dream. Pandoto, anapata warning. Don't. Asiki. Pastor anakuja. Pastor anabari. Anasema, I'm going to do a series on obeying the voice of God. The whole three months, God is speaking. Jamabado asiki. God anasema, all right. Anambia malaika. Vasuti. Ya moto. Your motto will catch their attention. Lift up your hand and say, Father, may I never get there. Come on, talk to God. Say, Father, may I not get there. In the name of Jesus, I hear your voice. I follow it. I submit to the voice of God quickly. All the time. In Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, you can do better. For Jesus, you can do better. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord.
going to give somebody not more than three minutes, just between one and three minutes. I want you to make this very personal between you and God. Nobody is interested in your story. Nobody wants to know why. But as you hear this teaching about God's voice, I believe that God could be speaking to somebody here today. It is wrong for me to teach like this and not give you an opportunity to come to this altar. And you may need to tell God something yourself. That's what I'm saying. We make this personal. If you need to come to this altar, maybe there is something God has been telling you and you have not done it. Maybe there is a decision God wants you to make and you don't know. But you know in your spirit, maybe even in dream, through the pastor, through this teaching, you are saying, God, whatever you are telling me, I am going to obey you. I want you to walk from where you are standing. And this is what you want, I want you to do. I want you to come to this altar and kneel here. I am not going to talk to you. I don't need to know why you are here. But I want you to tell God something concerning whatever he's been telling you. And don't take more than three minutes. Between one minute and three minutes. After that you go back and sit. And we finish this service together. So just walk. I must do that. I want to give you an opportunity. Come to the altar. And open your heart. Pour your heart to the Lord. And say God. Maybe it's this or this or this. And I've been hearing your voice. And when I leave here today, I'm going to fall. I'm going to obey your voice. I'm going to do that which I know I must do. Glory to God. If there is nobody, I will close. But there is power on the altar. That's why I'm saying come if you need to. I don't want to know why you're coming. It has, it has nothing to do with me. Come kneel there. Pour your heart to the Lord. And then you go back and sit. Whatever you tell the Lord, it is you that knows. I surrender. I surrender. is watching you can do the same wherever you are if God has been speaking to you and you have not yielded to his voice but after this teaching you can tell that what I'm hearing is the voice of God and now you say I want to obey that voice and I want to follow that voice from wherever you are if you can take some moment uh, and kneel on the altar just continue playing. Just continue playing. If you can kneel wherever you are and tell the Lord, yes, I am saying yes to you. Maybe you're in this service or maybe you're watching and you're not born again. Now, unajua sauti ya buwana imekwa inakuita uokoke. Unajua if you You have even had dreams and you know that God is calling you to give him your life. But you have not obeyed his voice. Now you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray for you. This is important. Once you are prayed, you come, you take your seat. And if there is anybody that wants to give their life to Jesus, that one I will pray for you. If you're on the altar and you want to give your life to Jesus, don't go back to your seat. When you finish the prayer, stand here. I will pray for you. If there is somebody in the congregation that wants to give their life to Jesus, please come. Please come. And uh, I'm going to pray for you. And Jesus will come into your heart and save you. Anybody wants to get saved, please come. Jesus, 
anybody that is saying I, I need to give my heart to Jesus come here I will pray for you those of you that are following live want us to pray as we close this service this morning you can go ahead and send in your tithe, send in your offering the information on how you can give is appearing on the screen how you can give so go ahead and give online in the next 10 minutes we shall be back with our second service in Jesus name bye bye